Talk She. Recorded live. Hello and welcome to everyone to the Wednesday night University of Eucadia call. I'm your host, Frank O'Collins, and I thank all of you who have taken the time tonight to listen to this call, uh, being Wednesday, the 21st of September, 2011. And you'll be able to hear this call again uh, as it is uh, stored not only on TalkShoe, but also recording is made onto University of Acadia. And I'll give you the website for University of Acadia. It is university.ucadia.info. That is university.ucadia.info. So thank you for all those that are listening now live and all those that will be downloading this call later on. We have a standard format, and I just want to reiterate how we normally handle these calls to those that may be on for the first time. What I'd like to do tonight, and what I, I do, is I cover research and feedback over the last week, new insights, uh, new successes, uh, new discoveries that we have covered, and questions that people have asked that would be better explained. And we do that over the first hour, hour and 10 minutes. So I hope you're able to stay on and listen for that first hour, hour and a half. And when we finish that first hour, or hour and 10 minutes, I should say, then what I ask is for your questions. And two ways to, to raise questions. And I ask if you can leave it till the first hour, hour and 10 minutes is over. But there's two ways to ask questions. The first is just to type the word question in capitals in the chat box, and that will be picked up. And I look forward to answering any of your questions, no matter what they are. And secondly, the other is to speak live and ask your question on the air. And to that, I ask if you please uh, click on the button uh, to put yourself in, in the queue, which is normally star eight, hash eight, or the, uh, the icon on the uh, talk show function. With that, the theme tonight, and I think it's good if we can uh, do themes, but the theme tonight is the power of you. The reason I've chosen the power of you is that one of the regular issues that is being raised for each and every week as people share and talk about how difficult they keep finding things is how easy it is to forget just how amazing our ability is to both create an impossible dark place for us to get out of and for us to be productive. I want to share that because this is a, a key reason of why the world is structured and why the world is so wasteful and the why the world is so frustrating. Your ability to be productive has never been greater than any other group at any other time in history. And so it takes an enormous amount of effort in the present world we live to convince us that we have not the power to change our world. So I want to talk about the power of you because there are many things we talk about and you hear me speak about progress and it's easy to say, well, I can't do this because I'm waiting on this or I can't do that because I'm waiting on that. So tonight the theme about the power of you is to remind ourselves that whether or not there are those that are able to help us yet, whether things are finished yet, there are many, many actions that we can be doing today that will make a difference for our situation. Now tonight I want to cover a number of subjects first before we get a bit more into the theme tonight. The first I want to cover for those that are new to Eucadia, and in fact even those that have been reading, is this question. What is Eucadia? You've gone through, you've looked at the different sites, you've read maybe some spiritual material, you've read One Heaven, or you've had a look at one of the law sites, or you've had a look at the financial so the question that people keep asking, and it's something that sometimes contributes to the uncertainty of what is behind you, Kater, is what is it and why? I want to cover then, after that, the question of Eucadia trusts again. And the reason I want to cover trust, just briefly, just quickly, is that there is still the uncertainty that people have in saying, well, how many trusts are there? And am I not the general executor? And if I am the general executive, then why do we mention the word trustee? I want to explain the three trusts, divine trust, true trust, and the potentially many superior trusts 
under Eucadia. And that leads us into the next topic I want to cover tonight, this issue of public and private. It is confusing, very confusing. And unfortunately, we tend to mix the two together and we lose perspective. It is very much about how you're looking at things that determines what is private and what is public. And I want to cover that again in hope of clearing up an area that is very confusing. And I hope this clears it up for, for everyone who's listening. I want to cover the area again, which we spoke about last week in some detail, this question of the agent and the appointment of agent. And I want, want to add to that also the aspect of the authority, the claimed authority uh, of judges in terms of warrants. I want to cover that so we get that whole area very clear as to what is the authority they are presuming. I want to talk about the real meaning of standing. This is the word we've spoken about several times. I know many of you have used it, speak about it, but what is it actually and where does it come from? What, what perspective and what context does it come from? I want to talk about passports and in particular passports as the enemy license to trade as compared to birth certificates. I want to talk about common law rights and be able to reference higher forms of law that are being contradicted by a lower estate's policies and how this may clarify one of the concerns that I know a number of people have said when they've heard me say that common law is, is dead where there is still evidence that they will observe common, what we could call common law but this really being an obligation in their system that a lower estate, a lower slave plantation, when held, held to account, needs to honour the statutes of the higher estate and how we specifically use that. I want to quickly cover the UCC filing that a number of you are aware of that happened in Maryland and a number raised, uh, the highest and largest liens ever created. I want to talk about that and, and what may be behind it because that is, again, an anomaly. So there's a few things to cover tonight. What is UCC, Acadia Trust, private and public, agents and warrants, the real meaning of standing, passports, common law rights, UCC filing, of course, the power of you. So I hope we can get through all of this in the hour and 10 minutes. And let's get started. When people come to Acadia for the first time, and I'm the first to admit, that the material that is presented there as it stands far from makes it easy to get a handle on what is Eucadia as a whole. And I would like to apologise to anyone that because of that uncertainty has meant that it's taken them a while to leave, to come back, to maybe believe what some people say sometimes when people say, well, this is some disinfo, where other people who don't read it might even claim it's a cult. And in the absence of coherent and clear descriptions, it appears that we're almost willingly playing into the hands of disinformation against Eucadia. But the best way to understand what Eucadia is, is to get a bird's eye perspective of what the present system is. And the reason I say that is, if one does not see the present system and what is involved in maintaining the matrix of the world we live in, then Eucadia itself does not necessarily make sense. The present system we live in is not merely just constitutions and statutes. It's not merely courts and banks. It's not merely universities and rules and entertainment and culture and television. It is a complete, complex, interrelating network designed to influence your mind, designed to enforce certain beliefs, designed to convince you that you do not have power, that you are powerless, and that any standing, any worth, any value is by being loyal to this matrix, to this system. 
Now, it is massive. It is, an it is the most complex, largest idea ever created. And at its apex, at its pinnacle, sits the Roman cult, the Vatican, as a kingdom of ideas. It may not appear to most people, and I'm sure if you've raised it with friends, relatives, where you say the word Roman cult or the Vatican is the most powerful, they probably laugh at you and say, come on. And that's because we don't see the ideas behind the real. We only see the real. We forget that a car was once an idea. The concept of a highway in private transportation is less than 80 years old in terms of a, a complete uh, model rolled out. The concept of the suburban home with our own backyard, again, is a relatively recent idea in, in civilised history. We don't necessarily see the ideas, we just see the real. But it is this network of ideas that is at the heart of the Roman system, is at the heart of the system of control, is at the heart of this matrix. And whilst there have been some incredible philosophers, some brave men and women that have dedicated their lives to make a difference in not accepting they are a slave, in not accepting this system. Unless you address the foundations of the existing matrix, unless you consume it, any action that you take against it will only rejuvenate it and renew it. So, Eucadia is a covenant consuming the claim covenants of the existing system that they may stand and be the agents of the divine over us. We remove that. We remove that and we say categorically, no one stands between you and the divine. No one. Not Franco Collins, not a Pope, not a rabbi, not an imam, not a sheikh. No one stands between you and the divine. Eucadia is a set of covenants and charters that define new relationships from the grassroots up, from campuses, we call them, not counties, from provinces, not states, from universities, not nations, up to unions and the globe. And in that, Eucadia is a new land title system because the existing system will never give up its claim of land, ever give up its claim of land. If you think it will, it won't. There is no remedy in having anything lodged in their system because they can reduce it, reject it, and, and, and at any point. Eucadia is a language. Eucadia is a knowledge structure so that we can break through this, this mind control system that takes the best and the brightest, puts them in a university, teaches them to be orthodox robots, and then sends them off so that the breakthroughs in medicine are rejected, the breakthroughs in science are rejected, the breakthroughs in society are rejected. How many times have you heard the madness that there are cures for a whole range of ailments that our grandparents knew that are now considered illegal to be practiced. This is not the progress of medicine. This is medicine going backwards. Eucadia is a financial system, a supreme financial system, because unless you challenge the rights of these families, the original families of the Servi Camera, set up in the 13th century to control money, then they will continue to manipulate through the controlling of money, the credit of the world, which is what they are still doing today. Eucadia is an idea. Eucadia is a model. 